gas molecules of different compounds all behave in a fairly similar way. And to make it easier to do the math, I'm going to show you what's known as the kinetic molecular theory, also known as ideal gas behavior. Now we're going to pretend that all gases behave like this. Now the fact is, they don't, but if we assume they do, it's going to make the math so much easier. Gas is made of molecules that are far apart and small. They don't lose their energy when they hit container walls. They travel in a straight line. No changing from their course. They move faster when it's hotter. They have no attractive force. Here's what this means. The distance between the gas molecules are so great that the actual size of the molecule is completely insignificant when compared to the distances between them. It's sort of like if you're three miles away from your best friend, your size is insignificant when compared to those th that three mile difference. It doesn't matter if you're a cat, a dog, a bear, or a human at a three mile distance, you're all going to be pretty much equally small, especially when compared to the distance between you. Now some gas molecules are bigger than others, but because the distances between those molecules is so big, the size of the molecules doesn't really matter much. When a gas molecule hits any kind of barrier or each other, the collisions are completely elastic. In other words, no energy is lost in the collision. This is why gases don't cool down and condense when they hit against the side of a building. They maintain their speed. Otherwise, the entire atmosphere would condense and come crashing down on us and we'd all die. They travel in a straight line until they come across something that they hit against. This is basically known as inertia. An object in motion will remain in motion until acted upon by an outside force. When comparing the speed of the molecules at two different temperatures, at 200 Kelvin and 400 Kelvin for example, at 400 Kelvin the molecule will be moving twice as fast because it has twice as much kinetic energy as it has at 200 Kelvin. We're going to use the Kelvin scale when doing any math with gases. We're going to use the Kelvin scale whenever we do gas math. All molecules have attractive forces, but because the molecules are so far apart, those attractive forces are unable to work on each other. That's again why our atmosphere doesn't just condense and come crashing down on us. Because the molecules of gas, even though all molecules have at least some attractive forces, the distances between the molecules are so great, attractive forces don't have a chance to work. Now the ideal gas would have no attractive force. So therefore, whatever gas molecule is smallest will be most ideal, and whichever gas molecule has the weakest attractive forces will also be the most ideal. And anything that keeps those molecules as far apart as possible will make a gas more ideal. Under conditions of standard temperature and pressure, most gases behave like ideal gases. The most ideal gases are the smallest ones with the weakest attractive forces, hydrogen and helium, the smallest gases on the chart. High temperature, low pressure will spread them far apart. So if the molecules have high temperature, that means they're moving really, really fast and they don't have a chance to attract each other. Similarly, if you've got low pressure, you're not forcing those molecules closer together, so again, they're going to have weaker attractive forces and therefore behave most ideally. Now if we assume that all gases behave ideally, then everything we do for the rest of the unit will be nice and easy and can be applied to all gases.